Hi, this is Brian Post with the Stone Trust and I'm going to introduce the batter boards that we sell at the Stone Trust and use for most of our workshops and how they can help with speeding up the setup for your walling projects. Um, so this is a basic batter board. We sell them individually, we sell them in sets of three, and they come with a bunch of hardware, unassembled. So to start, these eye bolts go in through the slot, out through the hole in the back. Any washers that came with the set go on the back, and then a nut. You don't want to tighten this down yet, just get it started. And we'll do that for the same on the other side. There's different holes here for different widths of walls. We'll get into that in a bit. But that's the assembly process. And there's a couple different iterations of the versions. Ones like that just have a simple washer and nut. This iteration had a additional square washer bit there, but any washers that come with it go on the back side, the flat side, and only the eye bolt on the front. Okay. So to set up the frames, the first thing that we really need to know is our wall dimensions and particularly the base width of the wall. There's a bunch of ways to uh, figure that out, but I'm just going to draw out how I usually do it. Um, if we have the cross section of our wall here with a batter, um, and this is to the bottom of, of any coping that you've got up there. Um, our height we need to know. In this case, we're gonna do 42 inches to the bottom of the copes. We need to know the top width of the wall. And in this case, we're gonna do 16 inches wide. We need to know our batter. Now the batter on these batter boards is set up for one to six. So for every six inches up, one inch in. So that's what we're gonna use. Every six inches up, one inch in on both sides. So to calculate our base width, if we kind of go down, uh, six or 42 divided by six is going to be seven. There's another seven inches there, 16 in the middle. That's a total of 30 inches wide at the base. So now we know our base width and we can start setting up the frames. All right, so we need going to mark out where our batter frames are going. I like a can of spray paint just to give me some dots on the ground. In this case, this is just for the demonstration purposes. I haven't prepped a foundation or base or anything. We're just going to mark this on the ground. Um, one side there. And we're going for 30 inches wide. There's our other dot. All right. Now, the batter frames are, the batter boards are designed to be used with rebar. In particular, we're looking, um, what works the best is a 5 8 rebar or a number 5 rebar, it's sometimes called. It's quite a bit stiffer than the half inch, which is probably more commonly available at big box stores. So look around at some building supply places and get that 5 8 rebar. I usually cut it to six foot lengths. That's pretty versatile for most applications of walling. If you're doing a really tall wall, you may need something higher, but then it gets pretty hard to, to hammer in. Five foot is usually only sufficient to build about a three foot tall wall. Um, so having that six foot length is ideal. Okay, so the concept here is we're gonna put two pieces of rebar in the ground. The batter board's gonna connect the top and lock it and keep it from racking. Um, we don't pound these in vertically because then if we bent them in, we'd end up with a curve in our side of our wall. Okay, so we've got our spots located for the sides of our where our frame are going into the ground so now we're going to set that up it's very helpful as you as you start this process to make yourself one of these with a, a triangular piece of plywood that's the one to six batter on it so if it was a four foot piece of plywood it would be eight inches at the top wide if it came to a true triangular point at the bottom um, so we'll take our bar Set that up and hold this against it so that the bubble here is level and then we know that we're getting our right angle in the ground. Sometimes it's helpful to put your feet right on either side to keep the uh, bar from skittering. And we'll get this pounded into the ground. And it, it doesn't have to be completely precise, but as close as you can get it, the better. And 
and you can check it after if needed. And we went in a little crooked, but pretty good. Okay. Same thing on the other side. If you're in a precise situation where you have to be really careful, you can recheck your width based on the marks, of course. Um, get our approximately our angle here. Now, when you're hammering stakes and there's a couple safety things to be aware of. One is don't choke up on your handle all the way or you can hit your knuckle right between the top of the rebar. The other is don't hold the rebar up here because if you miss, you'll hit your hand. If you hold it down lower, you'll swing past and miss your hand. Um, you want to be careful of that. We're in the right ballpark there. So now we can take our frame and slide the rebar down through the eye bolts, both sides. With our tape measure, we're gonna measure up from the ground on one side. And we said we're doing a 42 inch wall. I'll try to measure about straight down. That's straight to where my finger is there. And we're gonna put that at the bottom of the board. Just hand tighten that nut for the moment. How precise you get is a little bit up to you. In most instances, it's a dry stone wall, it doesn't have to be accurate to the nearest eighth inch or anything. Um, but uh, the biggest thing we want to pay attention to is that the batter ends up being equal on both sides. And we do that by making sure that our top board is exactly level. And right now we're close, but it's not quite exact. So we're just going to Shift that, that looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna tighten down my nuts on the back side here. I use this uh, strench, the nuts on these are three quarter inch, so you can use a regular wrench or socket. Um, the strenches they make like for chainsaw maintenance and it's a handy tool that I have around. Um, I'll just do a quick double check, make sure that we are right about where we're trying to be. And we are. And the last step, get yourself some rebar caps. These are now available at almost any hardware store. Cap off the top of your rebar, because if you don't and you bend down to pick a stone up, you can easily whack your face on the end. So there we are. We have a first frame set up. I'm gonna set up a couple more and then we'll show you that. All right. Okay, so when we're stringing a long wall where you've got many frames in a row, there's a whole bunch of different ways to get those straight. If your ground is uneven, you need to be aware that you're gonna need to string a center line and do all your dimensions off of that. If the ground is fairly even, you can just work on one edge of the wall. And you can do that by stringing a line out in a straight line before you start setting up your frames. If it doesn't have to be quite that precise, you can just sight off of the frames that you've already put up, which is what I'm doing here. So on this side, I'm getting down, closing one eye, sighting along, hiding the first frame we set up behind the second one, and then lining up this piece of bar to be in line with those first two. got three frames up and when you're building a long wall usually having three frames up is about what you need because you can build the first section of wall up to and through this the middle frame up to about the third frame build that section up take down this first frame bring it around to the far side of the third one 
and then keep building. And you just keep leapfrogging the frames along like that. And that's why we sell these in a set of three so that you can always have them working for you. So the last thing here now is to set the strings. There's all different techniques and knots that you can use. A quick one is just a quick little double wrap knot. All different names for it. Cross over that bottom one. As long as there's tension on that knot, it's gonna hold. And we can string this out. And we have to have the string on the inside edge of that rebar. Otherwise the rebar is gonna force a groove in the stone wall as you build. And sometimes it's nice to have separate lengths of string between each frame so you can keep moving each piece up independently. A lot of times people ask how far apart should the frames be? If you're doing a long section of straight wall, up to about 20 feet is fine. Longer than that, the string's gonna start to sag. In this case, they're 10 feet apart. Um, on a curved wall, I'll often put them closer, maybe five or six feet apart, so that I have a guide um, for that curve. These frames are made here in Vermont by Seth Harris, who's an advanced level waller um, with also some fantastic woodcraft skills. They're made of white oak. They're incredibly rot resistant. I've had mine for about five years now and they've weathered gray, but they're still absolutely sound and they spend most of the year outdoors because they go from one job to the next. So nice and rot resistant, really rugged material. And I like these because I can set them up again with few tools. I'm on sites usually with a lot of equipment. If a machine backs into this, the rebar bends. I can straighten out the rebar, set it back up and keep reusing the material. With a wood frame, if a machine backs into it, it's crunched, it's done. And you're always buying more wood to make that frame. So they take a little getting used to, to work with efficiently, but it's a fantastic way to speed up your process. And you can buy these right on the Stone Trust website store and they're exclusive to the Stone Trust. You can try out these batter frames at one of our many workshops, especially the two day workshops. And we even teach a batter frame workshop, which gets into many more techniques about how to use a wide variety of batter frames.